SpongeBob meets College Football 25, who lives in a pineapple under the sea. You know the line, never before seen in a TV show, but still very much an important part of the characters we love. It's the choice school for residents, Bikini Bottom University, home to a lot of notable alumni, including Eugene Krabs, management and entrepreneurship degree holder, Squidward Tentacles in the musical arts, Larry the Lobster, physical education, and star quarterback back in his day. Unfortunately, the city we love is in danger. And who would have guessed it? The only way to save them is to build a winning football program. Making the ascent to the FBS, Bikini Bottom looked far and wide for their head coach. King Sponge sifted through many resumes and deemed Eugene Krabs will not be our head coach, as he would have not been comfortable opening up his wallet to keep players in town through the NIL. Instead, this proven competitor has a knack for winning. Some might even call him King of jellyfishing. Let me introduce you to new head coach of the Bikini Bottom Jellyfish. It is Kevin C. Cucumber, leader of the Jelly Spotters. Hi, Kevin. Rude, treacherous, ill-tempered, all very fitting adjectives. But with the city of Bikini Bottom on the line, we needed a bulldog. Kevin should be able to light a fire and whip this team in shape. I mean, heck, have you seen this roster? It needs an overhaul. 70 overall in the worst team in the league. Where do we even begin? With true freshman quarterback, Salty Sea star Kevin Cucumber has his work cut out for him. The impact dev trait gives Kevin hope and he's willing to give him a chance or two. Running back Timmy Tuna, senior receiver DJ Starr, sophomore Wally Waves, and Hugh Tentacles round out an inexperienced receiver room, Carl Coral, and Sheldon Bucket, two young 60 overall tight end. Defensive side of the ball, it's James Lobster at left end, Finn Tidepool at right end, Eddie Eel heading up the linebacker core, and a ragtag bunch of DBs, Sydney Seahorse, Mike Flounder, and William Fancy Sun. We'll see if Kingsley Crab and Gary Bob can step into their safety positions. The only positive note for the Bikini Bottom Jellyfish is not the roster, but the stadium, Krusty Crab Arena. Eugene Crab's head management at the Krusty Crab was runner up for the coaching job, but still generous enough to support his alma mater. And when I say generous, I mean penny pension. Somehow he convinced Kevin Cucumber to give him 90% of ticket sales for this season and the next five. In return, he'll provide the team Krabby Patties for every game day. Yeah, I definitely think he won the deal, but on the bright side, we get these sweet patches to put on our jerseys, sponsored by Krusty Krab, the stadium's named after the restaurant, and then we have secondary logos on the 25-yard line. That will definitely not translate to any wins on our calendar, but if I had to guess, it would more than entice a few prospects to come to Bikini Bottom University. What do you think? In year one, can Bikini Bottom entice Trayvon Shabazz or Nick Strong to commit to the Jellyfish? Let's find out and see what Kevin can do with a full board of 35 prospects. Good start uncovering some four-star gems like Pierre Marshall and Ben Conrad. We know these guys are going to be hot topics. The first week going about as expected for a terrible team, locked out by a lot of schools. But that is enough for now on the recruiting front. We all know it's going to be a slow and steady race to the top. In the meantime, let's check out some bikini bottom football. Let's take a look at our set of uniforms. Here is the home pink and turquoise. Notice the bikini bottom flowers on the helmet, a nice touch of detail. Then for the away fit, it's primarily turquoise with pink. And then why the heck not? Future. Chrome shows up weird in the uniform selection, but that helmet is supposed to be chrome white. Those three uniform sets give us a lot of opportunity to mix and match and find some pretty sweet combinations. For our first game and against the FCS Coyotes, it's only fair we just rock the home. First look at in-game action, quarterback C-Star at the helm, dumping it out to Tuna. It's only gonna be, oh, I thought I was gonna get stopped for like a one to two yard gain, but good spring for nine. You already know for the first play of the game, we have to see it again, C-Star to Tuna. Oh yeah, this looks clean. Second and one, jet touch pass. That's gonna work, Star first down. Conference USA is going to be no easy task, even for a rough and tough team like this. As Salty Sea Star drives down the field, I need you to let me know in the comment section what you think of this team and the uniform set. Is it clean or what? Over the middle, dumping it to Tuna. He's got it and he is out of there. The first touchdown for Bikini Bottom University. All this team wants to do is win because if they lose, well, Kevin Cucumber is going to have a field day on them at practice. Fourth and five, the Coyotes are seriously going for it right here and they convert. Come on, man. Let's take control of Lobster here on the defensive line, looking to get free. What in the world was the corner doing? Just stood there and watched number three catch and score. As we continue to battle it out against the Coyotes, you'll continue to see why a rebuild is needed here in Bikini Bottom. We 
don't have the star talent to save our city. Time is ticking. It's going to be a team effort across the board. Going up for the catch, tentacles couldn't come down. Waves, coral, tentacles, star, or tuna. A lot of good options, I guess, but we'll go ahead and take coral. I think he's the best chance. Second and 10, we have a man open down the sideline. Tuna just let it hit him in the leg. Unbelievable. We cannot keep seeing that type of stuff happen out here. Costly interception, salty sea star going to no man's land. Thankfully, another chance at points. We'll go back over the middle and look for Tuna to redeem himself, and he failed miserably. Down by 10. I am not hopeful for the season we are about to have. I can't get anyone to get separation or even run with full effort. Our backup quarterback's now in. I don't know what happened to C-Star. Phew, at least the true freshman's okay because that is a piece we'll need to build around going into the future. Touchdown, we're within one score. Looks like the Coyotes want to end this game right now. Fourth and one, dumping it out to the running back. What a tackle. Open field, it's our ball. All right, Salty C-Star, do you believe in miracles? Play action. Scrambling out to his right. He has some field. He has all day don't know where the spin was going i don't think he meant to spin that direction under immense pressure gets it off to more is that dj Moore? always looking for guys especially with nfl talent to step in and make some plays big drive right here big third down scrambling to his right we have a man underneath it's more again looking for pay dirt gets into first and goal honestly there's no rush to score right now but we'll take it here and now with waves making a wave big time playmaker big time play let's go bikini bottom our excitement was short-lived as it's third and eight fourth down we call a timeout they got the three points we're now down by two with no timeouts someone's got to play hero again and i don't know who's it gonna be looking up and down the line here i just want someone to step it up maybe it'll be you coral come on kevin dig something deep looking to make a splash play let's just launch it to our star receiver it's dj star well that sure as heck did not pan out what might pan out here are you kidding me is he open it's more springing free is Time expires, game over. That was for the Krusty Krab. That was for Bikini Bottom. That is a thrilling game one to start off the season. A home victory on the final play, the final second. What a wild and wacky finish. 34-30, the Jellyfish are 1-0 on the season. Gary Bob got Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week. And all in all, that's going to be a game Bikini Bottom won't stop talking about. Hate to be the bear of bad news, but this next one is going to be a whole lot harder the Arizona Wildcats are in town that went exactly as well as you thought it would 35 to 0 shut out by the Wildcats salty sea star couldn't do anything whereas Braden Dorman from Colorado Springs Colorado cooked up five touchdowns now one and two on the season let's go on the road to Oklahoma State I think it's safe to say Bikini Bottom is a fish out of water in this one at least we got some rain maybe we'll soak up all of that like a sponge I think the away uniforms look pretty good as well I'll give the slight edge Edge to the home fit here on third down gonna throw one out to tuna no bueno i feel like there's some pressure to perform well and we can't let the season go by the wayside don't want to have to come to realization that eugene crabs would want to pull out of our crusty crab sponsorship ah uh, who am i kidding he's got 90 percent of ticket proceeds i don't think he's worried about our record cowboys at first and goal to the one are gonna hand it off and score hanging in this one right now it's low scoring we can go ahead and get some points of our own salty sea star has a good athletic build and legs that he can turn up field and get some big yards in fact let's do it again on the qb wrap minus four got overconfident there and now we're under some serious pressure fourth down scrambling to the left the magician is at work touchdown way to turn it all the way around that's what i'm talking about salty boy giving us the lead here by one point our guy slipped and fell at the oklahoma state logo intercepted i thought our team would be immune to that given the fact we come from bikini bottom it is extremely wet down there it is not looking good for this team c star had to go to the bench and sit this one out for the remainder making a little bit of a comeback here at the very end but it's all out of reach oklahoma state was in cruise control for most of this game checking in on the recruiting front we're firmly in the race for some four stars like spencer bullet and then a quarterback malik Kasverharn got an upcoming visit but we're losing to arkansas for matt maggio gotta watch out for them hogs for cedric warrior as well and then a splash of three stars were handing out points across
across the board. A monumental moment for this program, a Cedric Warrior, our first commit four star DB. And it doesn't stop there. Looks like this secondary is getting tough. Spencer Bullet. These two guys are Kevin approved. And man, I sure hope they bring the intensity as this squad is two and four. Just pulled one off here at the halfway point against Kennesaw State. Freed up with a lot of recruiting hours. I'm going to go turn our attention to some other guys we're closing in on. Let's get Coco Fleming in on a visit against Sam Houston. Our board has been deplenished and it looks like there are a few more four stars that are still technically open. Happy to jump in and add some more guys. Guys. Once you go jelly, you never go back. Scott Battles, welcome to the team. This might just be one of our biggest signings yet. Malik Kajavarn. Four-star scrambling QB is going to give Salty Sea Star a run for his money on day one. I told y'all Kevin Cucumber's not here to make friends. He's here to create a competitive product. And this team at two and six needs to get a whole lot more competitive. Since we know year one of the rebuild is wraps, let's go ahead and put on the future outfits. Some prospects visiting us in this one. It's all about the future. So let's go ahead and and put on a show C star with a burst a spin he's continuing down into the tent not gonna lie man these unis came out better than I thought we're playing like a team straight out of the future you look good you feel good you play good into the end zone it's another touchdown 21 to 7 for bikini bottom in the second quarter all right now we've seen the home the away and the alternate future jerseys this one is really doing something for me how about you all third and eight at midfield on the jellyfish logo let's go with a slip screen and go ahead and drive it right down the field not quite the first that's never stopped kevin from remaining aggressive with his units and it's gonna not pay off that is a freshman mistake pick six on the bright side here we're having a spectacular game with c star against the five and two bearcats if we can go ahead and get another score before halftime i'm gonna feel pretty good about the cushion third and extremely long after getting sacked let's go ahead and and chuck one up to waves deflected into the hands of a bearcat defender all of a sudden some poor decisions are coming back to haunt bikini bottom unfortunately the lead was botched in the first half and the comeback in the second half wasn't happening even if we get some points right now which we do do not an onside kick and second score in 15 seconds sounds uh very improbable you could say let's go ahead and see if we can score just one more time for good old sake and it's not gonna happen kevin is disappointed in his unit falling to two and seven going to need to work them i guess all the more harder in practice <laughs> surveying the prospect list some more we found tomote potato uh dude answer the phone because the cuna kings team builder series is calling we need you on the potato kings underwhelming first season finished two and ten dropping one against mr worldwide pitbulls panthers my goodness where do we even start in conference usa finishing last at the basement with new mexico state even kennesaw state's first year on the fbs was much better than ours salty sea star stats here at quarterback tell an awful lot this just ain't gonna cut it for kevin in addition the defense is really really bad finn tidepool with three sacks led the team mike flounder with two inner interceptions that's it oh goodness we need help and to get some help it's gonna start by firing randy contrell at least texas a&m fans have something to celebrate this season as connor wayman with the heisman now with a chance to find our replacement offensive coordinator we have a few guys we can look through matt babcock doesn't look like the one jalen burden looks okay logan sipniewski eh. joel whittaker that's better i'm looking for someone strong in the recruiting department jay coleman is not that guy but he does have scheme guru on Locked. I was about to make an exception for Jay Coleman, but then I saw Kyle Rosario. Dude might be an F on the prestige, but he is an elite recruiter. With no other competition and an F prestige, I'm sure we'll get our guy. Early national signing day, Bikini Bottom came up with a decent class. 59th best in the nation, three four stars. I'm happy with it. Got our man Kyle Rosario. It's time to prove everyone wrong. A look at the college football playoffs shows Alabama squeaked away over Texas A&M 32-30. Looks like the Heisman winner just couldn't do enough when it mattered most. Kevin knew some guys would not be happy at 2 and 10, so more waves and crab all hit in the portal. Nothing we can really do about it except hit the portal hard ourselves, so let's go ahead and replenish what was lost, adding four more guys. The number one player in the transfer portal, Dylan Thienemann, is here and is a five star from Purdue. We can only dream guys like this will start wanting to play for Bikini Bottom. Managed to pull three of the four targets Max Raider, Isaac. 
Malik Son, and I think we'll go ahead and get the last one. Kyrie May is just about to pull the trigger. Just because there are some college transfers doesn't mean the high school recruiting scene stops. Lots of players like Larry Sermons, Jem, and waiting to be taken. It's not John Lennon, it's John Lemon. Success in the transfer portal leapfrogged us right to 38th in the nation, best class in Conference USA. End of your training in the books, up to an 80 overall. I don't wanna say Kevin Cucumber is a magic pickle, but dude has got a way with the players training them up. The start of a new season and fresh batch of recruits is one of my favorite times of year. I get to introduce you to the new guys and Malik Ordi, a 75 overall true freshman impact quarterback is gonna be the day one starter. A little bit slower than C-Star, he does have a better arm and accurate ball. Wide receiver is a position of desperate need, but we did just bring in a guy named Paul Maggot. That is a wild last name. He's only normal dev. So yeah, this team needs help at this position. Impact B for the Krusty Krab love to see it. Tim Trahan at left outside linebacker is also going to be thrust into a starting role. And then we can't forget two of our biggest signees, Spencer Bullitt, a star cornerback, and Cedric Warrior, a normal dev, which really stinks, but a four-star 74 overall nonetheless. Should be a good depth guy going forward. Two wins last year in an initial board full of kickers, fullback, and punters. No one else at a skill position that is a three-star is off the bat recommended to us. Oh, just kidding. Maybe I was looking at the wrong panel because now I see some four stars that it at least recommends to us. And then if we sort it by interest, a lot of one and two stars, we'll go ahead and pluck out the three stars and up. Didn't have luck in the first season, but if Akbar or Gossett, maybe Isaiah Ship, heck, James Silvestro, or Kamani Merrill commit to us, one five star would be massive. Business as usual. And yeah, we're not gonna be out here expecting one of those guys to come. Just gotta run a tight ship. It's almost like Kevin's recruiting again for the Jelly Spotters. He has to keep a sharp eye out for talent while letting no nonsense into the club. Any funny business, and he's kicking you to the curb. You can either lead by love or lead by fear, and I think we all know which one Kevin's choosing. We'll see how well it works out for the Cucumber as a tough slate of opponents away. Once again, ending the season against Mr. 305 Worldwide Pitbull. Definitely can't get ahead of ourselves as we have a date at Johnny Red Floyd Stadium. It's Middle Tennessee State first. Speaking of the Blue Raiders, let's go see what they're all about on their home turf. Sunny clear blue skies out in Tennessee. That is a good sign for a good game of football against the Raiders. Outcome bikini bottom in their turquoise and pink. And most importantly, I'm excited to look at the future of quarterback. Don't know if I'm going to be able to pronounce that last name every single time and a interception on the first play of the game. I don't know if that's going to bode well for this team either. Testing the team early on defense. Fourth and one, we could not get the stop. He's all the way out of there. Touchdown. Whether you believe in second chances or not, we're going to give number four one of those. He needs the pass. And come on now, let's give him protection time. I see a slant developing... What did he just hit? Miscommunication, bad developing plays. It is spelling trouble early right now for our QB who gets out of there with pressure all around him, still running, running so many miles, cutting back in. Oh, baby. Now that we got that squared away, we can confidently scramble anywhere on this field and score. There's your first collegiate score in the NCAA. Keep that up, Malik, and you'll be selling jerseys at the Bikini Bottom Team Store. Defense is in a lot of trouble again. That is the third touchdown of the day. Just want a clean drive here from Malik. That'll give me enough excitement for one ball game. Nah, but for real, we just need textbook play after play. I want a student of the game at the helm, someone that can be relied upon when it comes crunch time. The verdict's gonna be out on Malik for a while. Definitely know it's gonna take some some time before we can confidently say he is or is not. I want him to be that dude and I'm going to take my time with it because I know we need to build a system around him. The way this one's going in our first week, it looks like a loss is looming. Never say never until it is a wrap because Malik out here is destroying ankles, my goodness. If he doesn't work out as a quarterback, I'm just gonna throw him at running back. In the red zone here, I think Tentacles is open in the corner. Bingo, touchdown. Ready or not, here we come. Marching into the red zone once more. Lobbin went up for the big man. Deflection and completion. Settling for three points, this will make it a seven point game. But wait, did the middle Tennessee Blue Raider run into the kicker? Unbelievable. That dude is selling first and goal. Definitely gotta take advantage of that 
that blunder and the very next play it's a fumble so maybe it was strategic maybe he meant to run into the kicker because he knew this was going to happen kiss whatever chance you thought we had goodbye down 44 to 26 this thing's over how are we supposed to muster up 18 points when we can't even get a second to breathe y'all really gonna do malik dirty like this in his debut game i mean that was not even two seconds behind the helm i really really hope this year is going to be better but what i just saw is not giving me any confidence the following week we come out and defend bikini bottom against the oklahoma state cowboys that's encouraging for sure just like it's encouraging to see five star isaiah ship as his number one choice and kamani merrill point is there is a lot of season ahead of us and it'll be interesting to see how it shapes week over week rest in peace one week later isaiah ship locks us out for an f deal breaker playing style looks like instead i need to double down on gossett Silvestro and Merrill. The ship has sailed on six foot seven right tackle. We will miss you. I'm having a hard time wanting to turn any of these guys into hard cells when we have grades like D plus in their mix. Come on, Merrill, case in point, athletic facilities, coached ability, not his cup of tea. At least for James Silvestro, we have identified a B plus. Let's schedule him to visit against Kennesaw State and make it a family visit. Gives us a nice boost and some cushion on Texas A&M. Moving ahead to a big matchup, it's Kennesaw State. We scheduled two five stars to come visit visit during this week so let's ball out against a lot of adversity our guy Malik has led his team to a two and two start this is definitely surprising as that's how many wins we had all last season stepping up and fumbling though need to have much better ball control fumbling it that close to the red zone is literally unacceptable I will stack the box we're going for it on fourth and one scrambling to our right we have a guy crossing on the slant very inaccurate ball a tough play to throw across the body like that we're zero and two in red zone opportunity that needs to change now. Malik dropping back, firing, Silas, touchdown. Looking for anyone that is probably trouble. And he caught it. I was counting that one out. Huge play has us all the way down into the red zone. Here he goes, Malik stepping up, fighting. First and goal. Two tie the game, quick strike out to Costanza, touchdown. Malik is starting to cook flames underneath his name. He is showing the world he is a capable quarterback. Unfortunately for Sandy Seastar, this guy is better as a true freshman than Seastar as a sophomore. Maybe that fuels Seastar to work harder, but as of right now, I think Malik has won the job and won the team. Yes, score for the lead. That's what I'm talking about. Bikini bottom up in here. So nothing but radio silence in the second half. You see the score, 42-21. This game is over. This is exactly why Kevin refuses to give a compliment to anyone on his team. He's an aggressive, mean coach. So they need to prove themselves executing game plan after game plan before they get any accolades. Still a long way to go before we can climb the mountaintop and be a Conference USA contender. At least we got Juan Valdez, but I'm not going to be surprised if we lose out on both five stars. They are surely going to take a hit after that performance. If we hang in there a little longer, James Silvestro could still be ours. Not as optimistic about Kamani Merrill here. There is a lot of time left. He's about to solidify the top three in all of these other schools making some ground. Shout out to Hugh Tentacles for a great game. But Coach Cucumber is bummed out here. Somehow James flipped to a and in the last second. And this is not a pretty sight. Kamani's about to do the same. Continuing to shore up the offensive line good news here with Yates but bad news indeed for Merrill TJ Hurt three-star gem quarterback would be a nice consolation prize it doesn't make up for the five-star shenanigans but it's a good find TJ Hurt looks up to Jalen Hurts and I think he's got some of the same skill sets here 91 speed 92 throw power at the end of year two coach Cucumber just got an extension for going five and seven scraped by against Oklahoma State before getting pounded by Texas the pandas fell victim next and so did UTEP and Louisiana and attack in back-to-back -back weeks three straight losses and a huge upset over arkansas 44 22 our season fell just short of bull eligibility on the bright side malik did much better than c star in his freshman season 29 touchdowns 3200 yards he made sure to feed his favorite target hugh tentacles for nine touchdowns and 930 yards outside of sydney seahorse and his four interceptions there is not much to write home about on the defense going into the offseason that needs to be the biggest point we address unlv with the miracle run beating Purdue 
and Florida to get to the national championship game just for the dogs to win another one. Not a fan of what I'm seeing in the transfer portal. Only one guy, Micah Gifford, is okay with becoming a jellyfish. So of course, I'll give him everything he asks for and more. Kevin's got some NIL bucks up his sleeve. Kevin landed the transfer from Baylor, but this recruiting class was not as good as the first one. Not gonna lie, it's been tough sledding. All said and done, the 47th best class in the nation, two four stars, 19 three stars, still a lot of work to be done by the cucumber. So training has come and gone we're up to 84 overall it has been a slow build in this one year three should honestly be a turning point you just saw hurt and now get used to seeing nathan yates a star right guard anchoring this offensive line if that doesn't work out george costanza is right behind him too juan valdez fitting right in on the defensive line trying to get more physical i strongly believe this could be the year we take our prestige up at least half a star the recruiting board would sure benefit from it and guys like awamagbi kalamatangi definitely butchered that but anyways 90 speed 92 excel 85 zone. He's a bust five star, but I still want a guy like that on my team. Jason Crewald, a scrambling five star quarterback, 92 throw power, great accuracy, 85 speed. There is a dude we can get behind. Nothing against Malik. It's just important we have options going deeper into the rebuild. Let the games begin with a matchup against Arkansas before turning our attention to Old Miss, Oklahoma State, and then the rest of our conference USA slate. Outmatched and outgunned in this week one opener against the Arkansas Razorbacks. This will be a great test for our defense and team. Jaquez Rudolph, his second sack of the day. Beautiful stop. That's going to cause a punt. Malik looking to take a year two leap. Going to start off by swinging the running back in motion here. One man to beat. Couldn't do it. Instead, we're just going to head over with a jet touch pass. Get our receiver around the blocks and through for a nice play. As exciting as this year two leap from Malik could be, I believe the team still needs a lot more work. Honestly, having trouble putting a timeline line on when we will be able to compete at this rate it could be a good two to three more years third and ten right on the jellyfish logo let's scramble on out of there we know he can do that and make a couple more moves to get some extra yards every play feels like there's potential for it to become a movie with malik back there let's go ahead and test this theory and call a qb draw on first and goal following some blocks not one at the end it is what it is play action true freshman lemons I guess that's what happens when you force it to a target and don't look for an opening. Are you kidding me? Malik looked really good that last drive until I decided prematurely to throw it to the freshman fullback. My bad for thinking fullbacks matter too. Third and seven. We'll go right up the gut here to Spillman. He's just going to take that thing and run touchdown drives falling short just like this game 24 to 7 now in the third quarter what looked promising throughout this one has turned into a unfortunate set of circumstances now forced to go for it on fourth and six just ate that sack like a champ we feel close but unfortunately not close enough to compete with an arkansas unfortunate but our timeline is probably one to two more years as gifford and our boy malik connect for a nice garbage time six okay this is actually crazy fourth and one they're going for it chewing the clock we still have all our timeouts so if we can stop them which we will not we might still have a chance in this one onside kick is that the kick we need what a one-handed grab by the razors now game on the line fourth and two if they convert here it is over over back to pass quick out that was seriously textbook. I don't know why we called the man coverage. In my defense, it was a blitz. We hoped someone would crash in on the quarterback, not giving him the easy out. Like I said, close, but no cigar. Kevin C. Cucumber has cracked the wall and landed Colt Wall, the first bikini bottom DB four-star prospect coming on over. Unfortunately, losing the five stars, I don't think bikini bottom is going to be denied. We have a handful of four stars still in the works looking really good. Believe it or not, Malik actually landed led his team to the Conference USA Championship game this season. The loss against Arkansas did not spell trouble for the rest of the year. We beat FCS, lost to Ole Miss, lost to Oklahoma State, but took care of a lot of conference games except for Jacksonville State and Western Kentucky, which we're getting a rematch right now in the championship game. Two wins, six wins, now seven wins in a championship game. This has become a steady progression through three years. Let's go ahead and take a championship game and get up to eight wins, grab a good bowl, and then we're in the 
driver's seat for year four and five. I made that sound a whole lot easier than it actually is because teams like Western Kentucky are perennial contenders in this conference. The last thing they want to see is Bikini Bottom marching up right into their home turf, walking on in here thinking they're going to go run the thing. But yeah, they got one thing right. That's exactly what we're looking to do is to walk up in their home turf and act like we run this thing. Shutting them out to zero points right now. We have a couple minutes to go ahead and cash in with some more stepping up in the pocket made time and room for Gifford to spring all the way free. Bikini Bottom is blossoming right before your eyes into a team that could become must-watch TV. In less than 30 seconds, defense gave one back up, so we're going to have to go right back to the ground and pound. Or really, I should be saying the air raid, because that is what has been working. Gifford already up over 120 receiving yards in this one, and we're not even at halftime, so there is a lot of game left to go ahead and get some more, just like right now. Unfortunately, that's going to come back with the holding call. Western Kentucky went and declines it, so fourth and five rather than third and 36. Gives us time to step in there and turn it over. Still seeking out our happy ending here. Jet, touch, pass. Yep, blocks, room, showboat touchdown the rebuild is definitely in progress but when we got johnny manziel's younger brother at linebacker and our four star first ever db we got to commit intercepting balls it's a good time this is it the game third down up by eight we need to hang in there till the very end can it be another interception by bullet like come on now conference usa championship player of the game give him the accolades give him the money all right number zero i need you to get one yard no matter what Minus one. Oh man, that was killer. We had to have the conversion. Fourth and two, right over the middle. Gifford, give it to him. And on that wholesome note, let's take a knee. Victory formation. Bikini Bottom has arrived and have taken the Conference USA Championship game right from the Hilltoppers. Be sure to come celebrate with the crew at the Krusty Krab where the trophy will be on display. So enjoy a Krabby Patty, some fries, and get a meet and greet with your favorite players on this year's roster there they are champs and the trophy well deserved sophomore receiver kendall grubbs got grubby with it 1400 yards 22 touchdowns that's a good year and our good year leads us right to the bahamas bowl against louisiana and the raging cajuns hopefully the team can stay locked in at the bowl game because it's hard when you're at the bahamas but huge moment here for the crew getting their first ever bowl game under their belt if they play like they did in the conference championship game louisiana should watch out gonna let the sim take care of it and get a good gauge at how through three years we are rebuilding right now 16-6 at halftime will the jellyfish hang on to the lead louisiana threatening back and forth they go they tie it up here with just a couple minutes down the field a three-point chip shot overtime back and forth and it looks like the Jellyfish Bikini Bottom has won their school's first ever bowl game. No better place than the Bahamas. Kevin has got to be thrilled with his group. While we celebrate with our group, it looks like Texas Tech gets to celebrate the ultimate victory, claiming the national championship. Really good sophomore campaign from Malik, 33 touchdowns to nine ints, making sure Gifford and Tentacles got theirs. Defense led by a few of our recruits like Rudolph and Battles, finally turning this defensive line around, racking up six sacks apiece. Bullet sure looked good. He got two of his three interceptions in that championship game successful campaign and the transfer portal finally opens up a bit no four-star caliber guys but we'll happily take the three six of those guys including transfers from oklahoma and missouri they should be good as we have done in every transfer portal session before this you have to be quick you have to be aggressive send the house is a non-negotiable and then you should look to quickly schedule a visit and hard sell while the rest of conference usa stumbled bikini bottom had a bounce back class only 20 guys six of them four stars so that's good and it's the 31st best class in the nation now we're talking business 86 overall across the board got our first 90 in darren france and then a mix of mid 80 overall players across this board bikini bottom is moving right up the ladder and honestly it's extremely appropriate because 
because the impending doom is just around the corner, so we have to save Bikini Bottom. We got a guy like Shane McConnell, only normal dev, but at least a good backup. Shane McConnell and Timothy McDonnell. This is the punch we have been needing, elite development. Check off another elite development player is Taylor Shockey, a left guard. Not gonna lie, this one feels even rarer than a running back or receiver. Offensive line elite dev is crazy because when you hit it big anyway with a star or impact player like Chapman, you're in good hands. We struck gold, a tally it our third elite development, this time a linebacker. And why the heck not make it a fourth elite dev, Colt Wall cornerback. We are so juiced right now, Kevin C. Cucumber can feel it. And this is Kevin's big year where he makes a couple more splash signings in the five-star department. Mark my words. The schedule isn't as jam-packed with tough non-conference opponents, so I'm expecting our best season yet. I'm just gonna come out and say it, we're having a hard time locking up a five-star. I can't believe how close we're getting, and then losing on the final second. It happened with Kaysen Barmore. It happened with Greg Lawrence, who I could have guaranteed we were gonna get him. The last five star of the five or six we pursued is Kenyon Vick, and we're so close, but week nine is, I think, this next week, so North Carolina could catapult. There are like no other options as well on the prospect board that couldn't quite match up to the five stars. In the meantime, I guess we just splash 25 points across a variety of three stars and at least try to get their commitment. And there it is Kenyon Vick finally commits to Bikini Bottom, our first five star. Thankfully, he looks pretty versatile and we can plug him in in a variety of spots. The season was marred with disappointment. Seven and five. No point in entertaining national championship aspirations when you go 0 and 2 beginning the season, losing to Georgia Southern. Raging Cajuns did pull off a nice four game win streak before dropping a 19 to three game to Middle Tennessee State. A couple more losses against Kennesaw State and Jacksonville State really sealed it. Kevin really expected more from his team as Liberty and Western Kentucky ran away with the conference. What's working in Kevin's favor is next season should be the best season on paper by far, which I'm still extremely concerned about after seeing this season from Malik. 2,600 yards, 17 touchdowns. Can someone explain to me the fall off here from the receivers. Defense continues to improve with Cedric Warrior and Spencer Bullet. Even Scott Battles is winning all of his battles. But let's be real guys, this team would let Bikini Bottom fall to impending doom. The Camellia Bowl against Kent State is just a smack in the face at the end of the season. This season's already a lost cause for Bikini Bottom, but maybe the Camellia Bowl just maybe will give us an inspirational finale before jumping in to year five. Cold and flashes, 70 overall, the rebuild's not really going their way. But I must say it's impressive to see this team get to a Camellia Bowl after being like the worst team in all of college football. Thankfully, Bikini Bottom, our jellyfish, are cruising 27-10, make it a two touchdown lead going into the fourth quarter. There's another one, the insurance points flying in, and that is a decisive victory. 37-19, Kent State is headed out of here. For our guys, Malik, France, and Co., we got ourselves another bull victory. Three touchdowns, that's a lot compared to what he did all season. Tooling up with some last minute recruits in the transfer portal, we have access to the sixth best player, Venzel Tam, leaving my alma mater, Kansas State, behind. No doubt about it, this is a big target. Let's go and get our guy. Kevin saw Venzel Tam, he wanted Venzel Tam, he got Venzel Tam. Before training boost, already sitting at an 84 overall, 85 defense. I just shuffled some of the team around for Kevin. Most notably, Scott Battles from the defensive line to left outside linebacker. Right outside linebacker, Quincy Cross to middle linebacker because the depth fell off a chart after him. And we have plenty of guys like Leon Ebby and Cam Hatchett at the right outside position. Cornerbacks are going to be straight dogs this season. Even safeties, we are deep. Training results are in, and yeah, it's not a surprise. 88 overall, 89 defense. You know what they say, defense wins championships. But this might even be more impressive. Our four best players are offense alignment. Malik is going to have so much protection in his senior season, something that clearly wasn't the case when he was a freshman. Bikini Bottom University has been building, and in year five, this could be the schedule of destiny. So why should we wait any longer when we got guys like Kenyon Vick and Timothy McDonald, two freshmen, ready to carry the load? The Razorbacks are no slouch. They're up to an 87 overall, doing very well for themselves, but it's the first year Bikini Bottom can officially say we're the best 
better team. That's right, our rebuild has taken us over the top. We're better than an SEC team like Arkansas. Yes, I know there are better SEC teams, but five years later, Arkansas has been treated well. 20th toughest place to play for Bikini Bottom right now, going up against Arkansas. What a slant, what a ball. That's how you convert on fourth down. Now let's go ahead and give it up to McDonald, the elite development running back. If you look out across the line, you see Vic lined up as a receiver. That's right, an 81 overall true freshman running back taking receiver snaps as Duvall scores this one. Two minutes to go and get something. Why not dump it to McDonald and booyah, he's got the first down. Hurrying up to the line. Maybe we can go ahead and catch someone napping. Malik gonna use the legs to at least get two. This whole team has rebuilt, but I think the actual one weakness of the team is receiver. We have a couple players that are starting to blossom into high 80 overall receivers, but the rest, not so much. It makes it really difficult to trust our group on big fourth downs like this one. One. Vic, I can count on you. Let's just say I thought I could count on Vic that last one, but the defender made a great deflection. Instead, we're going to march right down into the red zone and deliver one to Vic, who holds on to it this time. Still can't believe Vic's out here taking wide receiver snaps as Malik scrambles, keeps the play alive, walks it in himself. Start of the fourth quarter, all tied up 21 apiece. Let's see if we can find someone spring free. Yeah, we did in a major way. That is his first collegiate game first collegiate touchdown for Vic my guy is gonna be absolutely special for the jellyfish we can go ahead and ice out this game if we just run the clock down and there's one first down looks like Arkansas refusing to take timeouts but as soon as the two minute drill is over I bet they will yeah their whole mentality changed and we'll just give it to Creech the power back jet touch pass has been working really effectively so why would I go away from it when it's gonna spring open massive holes like this our receiver maggot number one Big touchdown, that's a dagger. Chalk up a week one victory against Arkansas. The future is here. 35-28, it's a wrap. Time to celebrate. This was a huge road victory. Malik showed that last year was a fluke season. I knew he had it in him because his first two seasons were gold. And boom, from week one to the end, this season was a gold mine. Conference USA Championship game. Currently just out of contention for the playoff bracket. A strike here to Fleming and a quick score to put our team on the board first should hopefully sway the committee another way. Let's get our team in there, 16th ranked in the nation. You might have just noticed that last touchdown in the quarterback of the game right now is four-star McConnell, who's stepping in for an injured Malik. The crazier story is hurt. Our backup quarterback, the gem find, also got hurt. So this is actually our third string option. You know things are pretty good when your third string is a decent player until he makes a boneheaded move like that. We need to go and capture this championship day and Vic's got plenty of separation. Haven't really thought too far ahead. If we win this championship game and don't get in, I don't know what I'd do. Because at this point, we'd be 11 and two, surely gonna move up at least a couple spots here in the poll. The team is not focused on that. We're focused on winning a conference USA championship game. Look at the strike to Fleming, let's get six. McConnell is more than capable, it feels like, to step up and be the quarterback back oh my goodness why do i even bother complimenting two minutes to go here it is all knotted up man shane has been under some pressure mcconnell in a battle all day long western kentucky will not go down vic just caught a pass now he's in the backfield as the running back let's hand it off to him and man this guy's got some giddy up juice, whatever you call it. I'm already deciding to go in chew clock mode. That's right. Forcing Western Kentucky to burn their last timeouts and getting us one step closer to a championship victory first and goal. I'm purposely not going to score on this handoff. Let's go down and chew clock. Second and goal. Let's go make it third and goal. And then finally, I'm just going to make it fourth and goal. Actually, I'm not even going to try to get in. I'll go ahead and dwindle the clock down to the final seconds and kick a field goal. A 23 yard chip shot is routine for most kickers. So let's do the dang thing. And we're champs once again. Conference USA is ours. This team is a good team. Western Kentucky's also a good team. And even with injuries, I hope they don't pull a Florida State on us and hold us from the national championship playoffs. Their case was a little different with the perfect season. Our case, we lost a game or two, but it's a 12 team bracket now. Don't want injuries to be the reason we don't get in. And speaking of those injuries, we should be able to get Malik back from his ruptured disc here in just a couple weeks. Sucks to see Colt Wall broke his tailbone, but for the rest of these guys, we should get him back at some point in the playoffs if 
if we can get in. Unfortunately, a look at the rest of the landscape shows we do not get in. Boise State, the 11 and two group of five school is the one to get the bid. In fact, we went back to 18th in the top 25. So I'm really curious how they come up with their rankings. I feel like we got snubbed in a massive way. They give us the Bahamas Bowl again against Arkansas State. We're 18th ranked. We just got absolutely humiliated. Thankfully, our performance this year was enough to stave off Bikini Bottom and get us one more season. So let's go ahead and go on this revenge tour based on the snubbery. Going into our final year of the rebuild, it has to be do or die. And thank goodness our prestige going up. People in the transfer portal want to come to Bikini Bottom. I just can't believe how hard I had to fight to get this team on the map. I get Kevin's got a very unique approach to coaching, but who wouldn't want to come down to Bikini Bottom and become a jellyfish? Starting to think something's really up with the progression or at least whatever overall is on paper here because this is ridiculous. We're taking a few steps back and I just want to say I don't believe it because one, I have experience from another rebuild where it did the same thing and we still were able to win it all. But two, let's just go through it position by position. Two very good quarterbacks, our best class of running backs, decent receivers, decent tight ends, but our best offensive line hands down 90 overall plus across the board and with some depth our best defensive line on both sides and in the middle then you account for the fact we have our best group of linebackers with depth and then our highest overall corners with speed 98 speed one and two safeties are even flirting in the high 80s so i don't know what to make of this horrible rating up top. Keep in mind that was just the training result panel and didn't include the freshman we just brought in, which should only bolster this entire team. The only thing I can say going into this season is don't trust the overall. This is our best roster yet. Four star insta commit before we even jump into week one. It's just getting easy out here. To prove our team's medal, we invited Oklahoma, one of the best groups in the nation, to face off in this one. Sooners up 10 0, but I can guarantee you they're fun will not last for long. Look at that ball under a sack. Getting hit, delivered it to Sermons. It's nice to see Hurt and all his patience pay off waiting behind Malik in the depth chart. He gets to step up and show this team what he can do. We love our self competition and we're not going to back down from a fight. Starting off the season and now we're on the board. The season can finally go. So nice. We're already going back twice. Back to the well. It's Vic. Can he outrun for the first down? Yes, he can. I've never seen a more versatile player like Vic. He's now lying lined up on the outside. Let's go ahead and feed it to him. And he's going to go ahead and take it down to the two. Bro is literally everywhere. And now that we're down here, let's go ahead and give it to the other stud running back McDonald. Come on, old McDonald. Let's try again. Yes. Touchdown. Ooh, baby. It hurts so good. Right back in the thick of things here in this one. Couldn't escape that sack. Looking to let one fly. We got Duvall. What a snag. First down. Great catch by the junior receiver and great pass by Hurt. Looking to keep it going. He's going to step up. He all also can run and make people miss just going zig and zag around and about that's one thing i've noticed about bikini bottom quarterbacks they know how to get mobile with 11 seconds before half here doing a great job getting the ball to the position and where it needs to go stepping up into this one fleming was out of bounds and we can't challenge it alone back in the end zone i can't believe they didn't give him the touchdown so i guess we'll settle for three it's all tied up gotta give credit where credit is due the defense has been stellar all all day long third and eight make it fourth down Oklahoma comfortable tying this thing up but going to overtime is not on bikini bottoms agenda right now with the game hanging in the balance leave it up to hurt or Vic I believe in one of those two runners and okay hurt grew up modeling his game after Jalen Hurts of course ironically played for the school he's facing right now Jalen Hurts and Mike Vic would actually be an insane backfield and we got our own little version of that out here on bikini bottom I'm just not gonna stop gushing about Vic is that okay? I mean, look at him lining up now on the outside. Where does this man not go? He's everywhere. Just like Oklahoma's defense swarming us on that last one. They were everywhere. McDonald just bounced off. Hey, if you're not going to finish your tackle, that's our benefit. Hurt to Vic. Just a wide open hole. You usually don't get holes that wide playing football, if you know what I mean. Successfully got Oklahoma out of timeouts. We're just gonna jet touch it and get more chunks. This is working really, really well. And I'm proud of the Jellyfish for doing a great game. This unit could have gave up when they were down 10-0. Instead, we were out to prove a mission today. That this is our year to make the national championship run and no team, no Oklahoma is gonna stand in our 
our way to stop us. That's ball game. You don't see Kevin C. Cucumber showing a lot of emotion, but right now, Coach is beaming on the sidelines and the players are amped up. Oklahoma by far was our toughest opponent of the year as we went on to knock off so many wins in a row until Louisiana Tech randomly beats us in week 11. We get a little chance at revenge in the Conference USA Championship game, but do you wanna know the worst part being ranked number 10 right now? Can I just come out and say, holy snub? Oklahoma is ranked number one in the nation and we beat those guys. Where is our representation on this list? I guess all we really can do is show up and beat Louisiana Tech in the championship game and hope committee finally changes their mind after a 12 in one season. Step one, beat the Bulldogs seems to be going really, really well 31 7 slowing it down one play at a time it doesn't make any difference the jellyfish score again tech does score a quick one and nope that's gonna be wrapped so we handle business as we should this bikini bottom team is ready to compete on the biggest stage it's really gonna hurt and sting if the jellyfish are left out of the bracket like it doesn't make any sense a 12 and one group of five team Boise State did it last year Liberty's done it a couple years like what can't tell me conference USA like I said when Liberty's done it Kevin C Cucumber is gonna lose his pickles man like what more can we ask for Josh C got coordinator of the year straight out of bikini bottom Chad Lamb won the Heisman that's whatever I'm more focused on did this team make the college football bracket we had to or this would be the snub of a lifetime and oh my goodness we didn't just make the bracket we're a two seed so all of a sudden the last picture before championship weekend didn't have us in there now we're awaiting a winner michigan tennessee before we get into that i think it's time i recognize the players that made it happen tj hurt an extremely efficient and clean season Kenyon vick is next level these are just his rushing numbers 12 on the ground whereas wilkins and duvall stepped up as sure-handed receivers one of the most satisfying things to do in a rebuild like our washington one is to get physical on the line and that's what we did silas toll Alex Bram, two guys, homegrown, 12 and a half sacks, 10 and a half sacks, and an eight for Juan Valdez, a junior. Cedric Warrior was a warrior out there leading the team at interceptions, whereas Friday, Farrell and Wall also had two. Massive round of applause to the Bikini Bottom coaching staff, Kevin Cucumber, Kyle Rosario, and then you heard it, coordinator of the year, Josh Sieg. These dudes believed in the process, taking the worst team in the FBS, Bikini Bottom, just six years ago, to taking on Michigan in their first ever playoff game. I guarantee you, I said it at the beginning of the season, and I'll say it again now, don't let the ratings, the silly ratings fool you. Once again, our best team on paper by far. The Peach Bowl, a prized possession. We'd love to take back to Bikini Bottom and show off at the Krusty Krab. So let's go ahead and get rowdy, get our guys amped up and ready to play today. Facing Michigan is never a sure thing. Gonna have to bring our A game and make sure everyone is out here on their best performance. McDonald, are you kidding me? The other running back playing receiver. Vic's done it, McDonald's done it. We just have some dogs at the running back position. Offense has seen some great production from people stepping it up, but I believe the defense is the crown jewel. Falling back to a third and 25. This is berserk. We're gonna have to scream scramble out and just go ahead and chuck one back to Wilkins. That was perfection. Hurt making the defense hurt so good. Now Vic's gonna finish him off up the gut. Got things working here on all cylinders. First and 10. Minus the one blunder there on defense. We've shut out Michigan to seven points. I sure hope I did not jinx myself by putting that out there for the world to hear. Because if I know one thing about Michigan football, they won't back down without a fight or a scandal. Regardless, I don't want to be on the receiving end of whatever happens. McDonald and Vic are two receivers on the outside. Undercut, man. That was not a good idea with the pressure coming in hot. I cannot let this DB take it back. No way. Instead, I had faith my defense had my back and they did in a big way. Instilling the confidence in Hurt to get back out there and perform. That's exactly what he does. Vic is just so open. Right down to the one, a simple touch will do touchdown can't believe the master class i'm witnessing fourth and six michigan all out of time they do hit their man touchdown this is what i'm talking about i don't want to be on the receiving end of anything funny out here please someone help me there's a play our stop did not matter michigan is hungry for blood right now as imagine dragon says whatever it takes that is what is required of bikini bottom right now one more first down this will be a ball game jet touch all the way through till the very end that was their last 
last time out. This is our last chance at glory to end it. Wilkins, or no, Sermons. He held on and fought all the way. Bikini Bottom's gonna win this thing. Bikini Bottom faithful, do you believe in miracles? What a ride it has been, and it's only getting started. Peach Bowl, check. Cotton Bowl, up next. It has been a frenzy, a madhouse. The city has been set on fire, some would say, in Bikini Bottom. They can't get enough of the jellyfish. Local resident SpongeBob SquarePants says it's almost as exuberating as jellyfishing in jellyfish fields. Or heck, even working at the Krusty Krab, he said this might just be one of the best things to ever happen to Bikini Bottom. The last thing this team wants to do is let down locals like SpongeBob and Co. A good dose of Vic here on the opening drive will help get things started and then hurt will do the rest first down now that they've seen the run a few times we try to play action but the pressure man some of those sacks come in red hot i'm not gonna lie as Miami brought the action. Every time I do a rebuild, I witness something new. The replayability is seriously unreal, and this time Vic and McDonald, two elite running back, also make up two of our best receivers in the game. Peach Bowl and a Cotton Bowl, it's a lovely campaign. It will become all the more lovely as soon as we go to that natty and take it. The National Championship Trophy, the National Championship game, of course, it's against world-class Alabama. There's no mistake in it. If you're gonna be the best, you got to be the best and here we come bikini bottom looking extra crispy wearing the futuristic jerseys because the future is today the present is what we've been building towards for years midfield the third and seven we got some separation there it's mcdonald land of course who else besides number nine between him and vic those two pack a punch and practically carry this offense let's go ahead and mess around get ourselves our first points of the contest. Touchdown, I could have ran it in. I chose to throw it in. Either option was open. The only thing we couldn't have done was not decide. Right before the two minute warning here, we are hungry for more, of course. The team is inspired, ready to take it all back for the Krusty Krab. Losing this game would hurt and sting in ways you never thought of. I do wanna come out and give credit to Alabama's defensive line. They make my 90 overall offense line feel like nothing sometimes. Single-handedly, they got me back to fourth and 20, making me take the three points, which I miss. All good though, because we can come back on the next drive, take a monster shot to Wilkins, who sheds the tackler and goes all the way to the two. If Alabama thought they could come in here and just walk the dog they're mistaken kevin's so serious that he's already chewing the clock here in the second quarter and he doesn't want to give any inch to the alabama crimson tide right after we cash in four six boom sermons make it happen the whole city of bikini bottoms going berserk right now watch parties across the salty spittoon the crusty crab even the chum buckets got the game on can't forget about weenie hut jr which is why i'm dedicating this drive to them fresh set here going across the middle intercepted maybe we are a big weenie after all poke the first attempt to the left this one is huge three points would give us a two possession lead and here we go i absolutely destroyed that one to the left as well you know what's crazier though the defensive battle that has been going on back and forth holding alabama to six points in the national championship game can confidently go ahead and mark that down on my bingo card as something i never saw happening chewed the clock down to the two minute warning right across the middle boom mcdonald and Vic. I absolutely love these running backs. They might be my favorite two out of any rebuild. So far, that is. It's going to be hard to find a tandem that breaks these guys. Looking to put the finishing touches on the game. He just scampers out to his right, gets nothing, but at least burns a timeout. They are stacking this box, which is exactly why I'm going to run a streak. And man, that looked like a silly decision. Somehow they were ready for the pass on third, diving for it, fourth and one. To be blunt, I'm going to trust the offense rather than kick a 43 yard field goal, which sounds silly to say. I just don't trust our kicker and i do trust vic which i'm wrong here they go on the attack it's fourth down in the defense the pressure it was all too much to hang in there alabama shut down to six points we have arrived bikini bottom is victorious with a national championship they're soaking up this minute like a sponge i know everyone back home is proud gotta give it up to the guy kevin 
cucumber, the man, the myth. He was a hard-nosed coach, a bulldog, but it led to great things when he instilled the skill into his guys. TJ Hurt did enough to get player of the game. It was efficient, nothing overwhelming, but really if I had more trophies, I'd give it to the defense. All in all, man, I really enjoyed creating this rebuild. I hope you also soaked it up with King Sponge, and if you did, hit that subscribe button and join me in the next College Football 25 rebuild. It's been your boy, Bikini Bottom. Go crazy, your champs.